Hey everyone, welcome to the Point Mechanic channel. My name is Beacon and today I'm going to be doing a review on the newest product from IgnisPixel.com. These are Bubble Poi and Ignis was kind enough to send me this set to do a review on. And I got to tell you, I have been, like so many other people, waiting for so many years for somebody to come out with persistence of vision technology in a contact Poi setup and Ignis has done it. Uh, if you don't know what that means, basically all it takes is a single LED strip, but in this case, since it's a sphere, there's three LED strips, and it will create an image as you spin it. Whether you spin it this way or you spin it this way, it will create a 16 pixel image. 16 pixels because there's 16 LEDs on each strip, meaning there's 48 LEDs per head. Now, I'm sure it's probably not going to show up all that great on camera, especially my cell phone because of the frame rates, and it's just never captured things like this very well. But believe me when I tell you, these things are super beautiful, very vibrant colors. Uh, it gets really bright. This is about the 50% brightness right now, and it has a lot of awesome images. There's 126 built-in images and you can control that all with a button, what images you get to. But if you want really advanced controls, you can use an app. That's right, these things are programmable. So you can you know, put whatever image you want on here as long as it's the right type of file. Like earlier, I uh, Googled a 16 uh, pixel Mario brother image and was able to put it on here and it looks amazing. Uh, I'm gonna be going over a bunch of the different specs on these things. I'll show you how to control them, how to use the app, how to disassemble them, how to put weights in the handles and the heads. And then I'll do a review at the end of the video. I wanted to cover all this basic stuff while these things were still clean. And then I'm going to go take them out and, you know, really use them a lot and give you an idea what I think about them at the end. So if you want to skip to that section, you can feel free to do that now. Now, uh, Ignis provides three different options to choose from. There's the basic, the smart, and the ultimate. Uh, $200, $300, and $400 price range. All of them will be the same and as far as you be able to use the app, but the smarts, or I'm sorry, the basics will not have one of the functions, which is uh, an accelerometer, which allows you to go to a certain part in the app and you can like do like training and stuff. So it'll tell you how many times you've spun it, how many times you've stalled it, uh, doing tosses, how many times you've dropped it. And there's some achievements you can unlock and things like that. The basic doesn't have that. The smarts and the ultimate do have the accelerometers, which means it has image stabilization. So it doesn't matter how fast you spin it or how slow you spin it, it's gonna create the same image. It's not gonna stretch it out or make it really small. Now, uh, they're all three gonna be a 97 millimeter head with uh, 3D printed material and same with the handle, it's also 3D printed. I think, and I don't know for sure, but they're gonna be coming out with a handle that's got an LED in it. I heard a rumor about that. Um, all three of them will come with a set of uh, charging cables, USB cables that you charge from the bottom, a bag full of weights, which will be put in the handles or the heads, and then this really nice and soft, plush, like baby blanket material carrying satchel. Uh, the basics come with a seven millimeter nylon rope. Uh, it doesn't have the bearings like this does in the head or the handles, and it comes with a 2600 milliamp hour battery. The smarts, which is what this is, come with a eight millimeter, uh, probably a nylon or polypropylene rope if I had to guess. Comes with a stainless steel bearing in the head and the handles. And it comes also with a 2600 milliamp hour battery. The ultimates come with the same rope, uh, a, a ceramic bearing in the head and the handle, which is great if you want extended uh, spin or orbitals. They're gonna spin a lot longer. I think they said up to five minutes. And it comes with a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. The battery life is going to depend on what uh, which mode you have it in and how bright you have it in. There's six different brightness levels to choose from. Uh, the basics and the smarts will get about six hours of use on average at 50% brightness, which is what these are at right now. Uh, the ultimate will get about eight hours. But if you're using like a super bright setting on a pure white mode, you're going to probably get about an hour. And if you're using like a, another mode that has a low setting on the brightness, you might get up to 30 hours. Um, let's see. They weigh 100 and uh, what are they? 140 grams. But you can put extra weight inside these channels right here, which isn't really neat. So I'm going to do that later and get these up to 190 grams, which is the max weight. 
And I think that's it on this. Now I'm going to show you how to control them. To get full control of these, you're definitely going to want to use your app, but you can do a lot using short clicks and long clicks on the button. To turn it on, press and hold, and it will bring up your timeline menu. This menu is broken up into three different sections. The red section has three automated timelines. The first one being 126 images being played back in a specific order. The second one being those same images played back at random. And then the third one being uh, solid colors, whatever color of the rainbow you want to choose. The green section has four customized timelines and you can put whatever picture you want at whatever uh, speed you want them to change at uh, whatever order you want. And then past that is what's called single picture mode. So if you just want one picture playing the whole time, go to that mode. To navigate, look for the blue flashing light, which is your cursor and each slow press will move that cursor up the menu. To enter a timeline, just press the button once and it will go into playback mode. If you long press again, it will bring you back to the menu. To check your battery life from the menu, long press, and then the blue light goes away and this comes up. Right now, I am probably around 60%. If it was 100%, the light would be all the way up here at the rope. Long press again, and it will bring you back to the menu. Now, to check the brightness, you have to be in a timeline. So play the timeline, and from here, long press past the menu until you get this white line with a pink dot. If you single press each time that pink dot will move up to the brightness that you want and then you can long press to get back to playback mode. Now I'm doing this on an Android but I expect the iPhone app to look the same. In here you can check things like your battery and signal levels of the current POI that are connected. You can change the brightness from 6% to 200%. You can change the amount of time each image is displayed before switching to the next image from one seconds to eight seconds. You can choose Sequent, which plays the 126 images stored on your POI in the order that they appear on the screen. But you can actually switch that order if you like. Random uh, plays back those same images in a randomized fashion. And then if you want to just play one image and one image only, just click on that image. It'll highlight and that's the only image in the playback. Now, if you want to put your own image on here, you can as long as it matches the right criteria. I downloaded this little Mario Brother uh, earlier today and I think that's pretty rad. Um, in this section, this is your solid colors. There is 15 different solid colors to choose from. The next section is your customized timelines, and there are four of these. This is awesome because it gives you the ability to put whatever images you want in whatever order you want, and then once you enter one of the pictures, you can really fine tune it so you can have it play for 0.01 seconds all the way up to 59.99 seconds. And that is really great because if you have a specific song that you're trying to build a performance to, you can match the picture changes to the, the beats of the song. Now back here at the bottom, you'll see we are in the control section, but if you have the smarts or the ultimates, you can go into the next two sections, which is training and records. Uh, these POI will have accelerometers on them and it will pretty much tell the, the app here how many times you've spun, what the RPMs are, the stalls, the throws, and the drops. Now, to be honest, I have found that this not to be as accurate as I would like. Um, like I'm gonna do a drop right now. Sometimes that picks up, sometimes it doesn't. And in that case, it just didn't pick it up at all. I find the stalls uh, are pretty good. The drops usually are, but the throws, I've never had it actually pick up a throw. So uh, I hope they can fix that in the future. Um, the next section is just gonna be your records, which will show you your all-time best performance versus your average workout. So besides the sensitivity issues with this part of the, the app, uh, I think the app is absolutely awesome. It's super friendly to use and it's just well laid out. Okay, to put weight in the handles or the heads, you'll want to get a flat object of some sort and then kind of slide it underneath this lip right here and then pry that back. As you can see, there's quite a bit of space for washers inside there, but once you start adding washers up towards the top here, it, it's a little hard to get in there, but it's definitely doable. Now, as far as this part goes, uh, I've been able to do it with just my finger now, getting underneath the little edge right here down by the button. That'll pop off, and you'll see that there's a couple channels inside here that had BBs. That's what this darker color is here, but there's an extra three channels, so a total of six that you can put BBs in. And you just take that, stick it in there, and then just keep adding more to slide them down. 
when you want to put that back on it will only go one way so make sure to get this charger port uh, hole uh, uh, aligned with that and I would put this side on first and then you just kind of stick these little tabs underneath here and then slowly work your way around until you get them all in there. So something else you can do with these is take off the rope and turn this into a juggling ball. If you want to do that, the way I would do it is to wrap my hand around the rope a couple times and then pry this way. That way it'll make one part of the bearing come out first and it should pop out like that. Now to put it back in there, uh, you can push it like this and then push this against some kind of a, a, an object like a wall or something. And as you're pushing in, it should go. You can probably do it with a hand tool as well if you wanted to. Uh, just be careful not to damage the bearing when you're doing this. And pop right in just like that. So what do I think about them? Well, I've been spinning them for about a week now. Um, not all that much, to be honest. I've been pretty busy, but uh, I will say they spin like a normal set of contact poise should. Uh, the fact that you can weight down the handles and the heads means that you can get these really dialed in the way you want them. If you do orbitals like I do, uh, I recommend the swivel setup. If you get these, I have the uh, ceramics and the, the ball bearing ones and they, they just do orbitals really well. Uh, they're super bright, so if you're doing a performance on stage, these will cut through that light and people will be able to see you. But I do see some problems with these. Um, the, the first thing is the cap on the back, as I mentioned earlier, it kind of wants to uh, pop off a little easier. I haven't had it pop off while spinning them, but because one of these actually doesn't even sit as it should, uh, when I got it, I pulled it off and tried to put it back on. And there's a little design flaw in here, I think, that could be uh, fixed to make that fit on there better. I have recently seen some people saying that they had these things pop off. Um, but the main problem is one of the strips started failing. Um, it's actually working now as it should, but uh, halfway up the strip, the LEDs uh, start or stop working sometimes. And I'm not too sure what did it because I've been pretty damn gentle with these things, not doing big drops or anything like that. And uh, it could be the fact that it is kind of squishy. And when you're taking the rope off or putting it in, it's really kind of hard. And it's kind of hard not to squish the, uh, the strips here. And, you know, I'm, I'm not squeezing on the strips themselves, but that's how squishy it is. So that type of flexibility in the, in the strips is probably what caused the issue there. It's actually having that issue now. And if I press it in the right spot, it starts working again. So unfortunately, I can't recommend these as they are right now. I do think that they can improve the design on this and it should, you know, just be fine. But um, that's not dogging on Ignis. I know that their other products seem to have really good reviews. I know people that have them and love them. Uh, their stick poi have like a polycarbonate tubing and uh, they seem to hold up really well. And there are a lot more LEDs in those things than these, and they, they look amazing. So no offense to Ignis. I'm sorry to disappoint y'all. Um, I'm pretty disappointed myself. I had high hopes for these, but at this point, I can't recommend them. So anyways, if you have any comments or questions, or if you've had issues with this and you want to talk about it, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, thank you all so much for watching and have a good one.